This is Greg Vincent with AgWeb. I'm talking to David LaBelle, who is a researcher and assistant professor at Stanford University. And Dr. LaBelle, you uh, just released some uh, information here today that's going to be published in the National Academy of Sciences about uh, high-yield agriculture and its impact on the environment. Can you just give us a quick rundown of the uh, research and what you found here? Yeah, the question of the research was really to weigh uh, the different effects that modern agriculture has on the climate system. So on the one hand, um, the production of fertilizer, application of fertilizer, a lot of the intensive practices we use, the production of pesticides, they uh, require a lot of energy and that uh, results in emissions of greenhouse gases. But on the, other, on the other hand, the alternative to modern agriculture would be a lower input, lower yielding system that uh, for a given population and a given living standard would require much more land. That land would then um, re result, clearing that land would result in greenhouse gas emissions. So we were trying to ask two questions. One was what is the balance between um, sort of the plus and negative on the greenhouse gas side? And then also what is the um, equivalent cost of investments in terms of carbon in agriculture compared to other types of uh, climate mitigation investments. Is, is agriculture contributing to carbon? Well, there certainly are emissions that are associated with activities in agriculture, and most estimates put that at about 12 to 15 percent of emissions. Um, but the point of this paper is that it's not really fair to just look at current emissions. You have to also look at the what are the alternative scenarios that, that would replace the current system, and we um, found that although you would reduce the direct emissions associated with things like fertilizer, you would greatly increase the emissions associated with deforestation and other land use changes. And so the, the net effect of modern agriculture compared to, say, the technologies we had 30 or 40 years ago um, is, in our estimation, a much less uh, amount of climate change, a much lower amount of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. The one question I just asked you earlier uh, that I want to ask you here during this interview is who funded this research and, and was there any corporate funding for this? No, this wasn't funded at all by corporations. This was really just um, internally funded through some programs we have at Stanford University to, to try to foster interdisciplinary research. Okay, now to go back to your statement that the net effect that we have now is certainly uh, much less than what we might see without some of the modern agriculture technologies that are in, uh, in, in used in production today. What, what kind of numbers are we looking at here? How do you put this into to something that people can grasp? Yeah, just to put it in rough perspective, if, if we um, assume that we had kept population and, co and standard of living increases, um, but did not improve agricultural technologies at the same pace, we estimate that the total amount of emissions would be about a third uh, of what has been emitted in, since the Industrial Revolution. So it's a considerable amount of carbon savings, um, over half a trillion uh, gigatons of carbon dioxide, if, if that means something to anyone. But the, um, the bottom line is this that modern agriculture has um, effectively saved a lot of land from conversion, that that is a pretty sizable amount of greenhouse gas emissions. And if you divide the total amount of resources that have gone into those improvements by the amount of carbon savings, it works out to something like $5 a ton of CO2, which is actually less than what carbon is currently trading in uh, Europe and some other markets. And what does that mean to the environment when you look at those numbers and, and how much, you know, is there a way to tell what the impact would have been on global warming or call it climate change or greenhouse gases, um, regardless of, of how somebody might feel about those theories, what, um, what would the impact potentially be here? I think that what this paper says is without the technology improvements, the pace of climate change would be something like 30 percent uh, faster than what we've seen. So it's um, certainly not enough to counteract all the emissions, but it's a sizable amount. And the real question, I think, is going forward whether there's an opportunity to um, use agriculture as a way of ensuring that we don't 
clear more land and have the associated emissions from that clearing. You made a mention in the news release that was sent out about the effects that this would have on, on areas where we do see starvation and unfortunately death of, of people. Um, can you put that into words for us on, on what we might have seen in, in some of those areas? It's always uh, really difficult to try to play out what would have happened, sort of the counterfactual scenario. But I think what um, most demographers and economists would say is, is that without improvements in yield, you would have continued to see uh, people living in poverty, uh, con continuing to have high rates of fertility. So population and demand for food would have continued to go up. Um, but the, the price of food would have been been high, um, and the amount of starvation would have also been high. So this is sort of not a unique finding to the study, or it's not really even a finding of the study, that the yield improvements historically have, um, have been of a, a benefit to, to humankind. The question here was really what is the, in a sense, the side benefit to the climate system of these improvements. Okay, and then just to uh, last question here, to real quickly summarize the validation of the research that needed to take place before it got it's going to be published in, with the National Academy of Sciences. What did you have to go through to get this accepted by your um, uh -huh. by the scientific community? Well, the, I think the novelty of this research was really just in the framing uh, of the question and trying to translate uh, units that are typically not not thought of in, in the climate community. In other words, the, um, the uh, amount of land savings that has occurred from agriculture. In terms of the actual methodology, we really followed very standard and accepted techniques for estimating the um, amount of emissions associated with different ag agricultural activities. So for example, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has a, has a series of guidelines for computing those. Um, and then the real, the real tricky part of this research is trying to come up with what the population and, and standard of living would have looked like in the absence of um, yield improvements. And that's really almost an impossible question, and our approach was just to try to lay out a few different plausible scenarios that were to kind of bracket what we thought was potential, um, potentially this, what would have happened without yield improvement. And peer review? Yeah, certainly these, these papers were peer-reviewed by several people on uh, actually two, two different occasions, which is kind of standard for this type of journal. And were you surprised by your findings? I think the, um, the surprise was, was in the magnitude of the, of the sort of the savings per unit of, of money invested. I think that it was a, it's a remarkably low cost way of, of reducing emissions. But this is not really um, in any way prescriptive of policy. I think that what we're, what we, all we can hope for is that this opens up a new um, way of looking at things and a new way of, of thinking about how to slow climate change. But it's not to say that every dollar invested in any uh, yield improvement anywhere will be a benefit to climate change. It's certainly going to be a lot more complicated than that. Most of the questions to these hard, hard, uh, hard things are, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. That is Professor David LaBelle at uh, Stanford University. I appreciate your time. Thank you.